Dave Burkett here from the Detroit Free Press. Busy day in Lions Land. I'm sure you followed all the news. Seen it all by now, but two big uh, events today, I guess. First, the Lions placed running back Kerryon Johnson on injured reserve. He had surgery on his knee. Um, IR, the Lions said they hope he'll return, but he's going to have to miss eight games minimum. That's uh, the rules with IR. Can't return to practice for six weeks. So uh, he's going to be out until at least late December if he comes back at all. Second straight year, he'll have finished the season on IR. And then the other news of the day, uh, shocker, that dropped just after the carry-on news. And look, I think some people thought, you know, we all knew carry-on would miss some time. He was hurt. Um, I asked Coach Patricia about surgery yesterday. He didn't rule it out. So we all, I think everybody sort of thought that might be a possibility. But the bigger news, I don't think anyone saw it coming, um, that the Lions traded Quandre Diggs to the Seattle Seahawks. They got a fifth-round pick in return, also gave up a seventh-round pick in 2021. And uh, look, I know this was the sort of the shocking news of the day. I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, like, why? What, what are the Lions doing? Why are they giving up a starting safety? Um, I think it's a risky move, no doubt. Um, when you give up a player that was beloved in the locker room, especially in that secondary, um, he was a Pro Bowl alternate last year. Uh, you know, and your team is 2-3-1. and one. You're sort of, you know, right on the, the brink there. You can't afford many slip-ups going forward. Um, it's a risky move, but it's one that, you know, at least my uh, understanding is – um, I think the Lions, you know, they, they felt that Quandre Diggs' play had slipped. Um, certainly, I think we saw it that he, uh, you know, had missed some tackles this year, wasn't making the same amount of plays that he had in the past. Um, and and then, you know, look, they're high on a couple y- young players in their secondary, Tracy Walker and Will Harris. And I think especially Tracy Walker, you know, we've seen he's going to be a really good player in the NFL. Um, we've already seen it that... Uh, sorry, trying to get that glare out of the back there. Um, but we, we've already seen, you know, the the versatility that he has, what the Lions ask him to do, covering tight ends and running backs and a little bit of everything. So the Lions are, they still believe they have a, a good trio really there in the at the safety position with Tavon Wilson being the third guy, uh, C.J. Moore, a young guy in the mix as well. Um, but then beyond that, you know, they, uh, look, this was a deal, and I, I, I tweeted this out, I put this in my story. This was a deal that the Lions were out there seeking to make. Um, you know, maybe there's some some reasons that I don't I don't know beyond just the play. I don't know everything that um, you know, uh, admittedly all the the inner workings of, of everything that that went on, but I do know that the Lions reached out to everyone or virtually everyone in the league trying to see if anyone was interested in Quandre Dig that digs they had very few takers, very little interest. Um, and so that's why they got just the fifth round pick in return for him. And, uh, you know, I think the, the question is whether it's worthwhile um, for this organization to, to get rid of, you know, a player that's, again, beloved in the locker room, um, you know, for that little return. Last year, Golden Tate, they got a third round pick. Um, you know, that's a, a more valuable draft choice, I guess. Um, and, and I guess we'll only, you know, find that, that out going forward. I, I, I can tell you, I don't think the Lions... Um, I don't, I don't think they, they thought that this would, A, you know, have much impact um, on the locker room long term or, or maybe didn't uh, didn't view it that way. You know, they gave very little consideration to that. This was a business decision, a football decision. Uh, obviously, in the NFL, things are very transactional. You have to be that way as a general manager. And that's how the Lions approach this. Um, you know, so but uh, certainly we, we saw the response on Twitter from Darius Slay, from Damon Harrison, from Jamal Agnew, from a bunch of Lions players. Um, who seems stunned by this. Um, I know those players respect Quandre Diggs in the locker room. Darius Slay certainly close with him. Um, you know, so it's there's there's some risk to it. There's no doubt about that. Um, and I don't know that the, the payoff is great, but we will see a little bit more of those young guys going forward. And I, I wrote this and said this as well. The Lions are not done trading, and I don't think that means I, – I, and that doesn't mean they're just going into a sell-off here. They are still buyers uh, at this point in the season – Um, The trade deadline is a week from today. Perhaps that changes if something goes crazy uh, this weekend against the the New York Giants and they end up losing that. But um, my understanding is the Lions are still buyers right now. They're looking for upgrades, uh, maybe at the safety position, maybe at the cornerback position. You know, they they have some injuries right now with with Darius Slayhurt. Uh, Maybe at the running back position with Carrion out. I mean, look, I, I, I threw these names out there. I don't, I don't know that the Lions have interest in these guys, but I, I, I put them out there. There are two running backs who can play a significant role on, on this team going forward. Melvin Gordon, who the Chargers would be willing, willing to trade. They've, they've said as much. Um, they let him explore trade options earlier this year. The Lions have plenty of cap room. 
And then Kenyon Drake, uh, Kenyon Drake wouldn't cost nearly as much. Melvin Gordon, look, the Chargers are going to lose him. They're going to get a, a high compensatory pick. So you're going to have to to pay a pretty hefty price, I think, to to get Melvin Gordon. Um, but you know. Uh, Kenyon Drake, it's not like he's in line for a huge contract in the offseason. So if the Lions truly believe they are still contenders um, and you look at the schedule, they only have three games left against teams that currently have winning records. So there's reason to believe that, that you know, they can string some wins together here. Um, then, you know, maybe that's a, a move you make because with just J.D. McKissick and just Ty Johnson in the backfield, um, I don't know that the Lions have enough to get by at that running back position in an offense that so heavily relies on the running game. We all know what Matt Patricia wants to be, um, you know, what sort of team he wants to have. We know what Daryl Bevel wants to do on offense. They have not run the ball great this year, obviously. You know, Matthew Stafford is having a fine year. We see Kenny Galladay, Marvin Jones, you know, uh, Danny Amendola. Those guys have sort of, you know, alternated, you know, having big games. Uh, we haven't seen really that out of the running game except for the one game from carry on. And I don't think Ty Johnson, Mc, J.D. McKissick, Trey Carson, anybody uh, on this roster right now is equipped to, to handle a significant role at the running back position. Matt Patricia said in his conference call with us today that the Lions are willing to go, you know, running back by committee. You know, that's certainly something that, you know, he's um, always spoken about, always sort of, you know, that's been his his position, I guess, when it comes to the running back position for a long time. Um, the Lions got away from that early on this year when they gave carry on a heavy workload. Uh, you know, and I don't, look, uh, as for carry on going forward, um, obviously this is, two straight years with injuries to, you know, both knees. It was right knee this year, left knee last year, I believe. Um, so, you know, there, there's a, I think you have to be wary of that running back position going forward. You still need someone else to complement that. Maybe you do take a swing at a Melvin Gordon. Look, I don't know again what it's going to cost. I know it's going to cost a lot because, you know, the Chargers can get a third round compensatory pick in 2021, probably if they hold on to him. Um, but the Chargers are not a very good team right now. Uh, you know, they have Austin Eckler in their backfield. Maybe that's something that if I'm the Lions, I, I'd be willing to, to take a swing at that. I know Gordon has some injury history as well, but, you know, you bring him to the mix, all of a sudden you get a pretty good running game, not just this year, but, but maybe going forward too. He wants a lot of money, so that's, you know, I'm not talking about that right now. I, I know that maybe the, the money that he wants is is something that, uh, that the Lions wouldn't pay. I, I certainly wouldn't pay. Uh, that on the open market for a, a running back that's had some injury history, but you know, just sort of throwing that that name out there. Um, yeah, I, I, you guys probably have a couple questions up there. I see Thomas writing on here. Can we trade Patricia and Quinn yet? Look, I mean, uh, this move by Bob Quinn is not the move of of somebody who's worried about his job. I mean, he just dealt a starter, a starting safety for uh, you know a. But I don't know. I mean, a, a day three draft pick. Let's call it what it is right a fifth round pick. Um, something that doesn't often yield uh, great returns. So he is certainly not operating like someone who's scared of his job. He's operating in a very business-like manner. Um, I think looking out for the long-term interests of this franchise, obviously, in, in his estimation, I think that's probably what, you know, anytime you trade for draft picks, that, that's what this would be. Um, and like I said, I don't think they're done right now. You know, maybe this is something that they use that draft capital to, to go out and get something else. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, I wouldn't think that either one of those guys is going anywhere right now. And in fact, you know, I sort of wrote this the other day. Uh, I mean, look, I, I know the Lions are two, three and one right now. Uh, things haven't always been pretty, maybe the way that, that people would expect them to go. Um, but you know, I think at least this program has taken a step forward this year. Things are pointing in the right direction. Uh, the wins need to be there. There's no doubt about that. You can't, uh, you can't go six and 10 again. Eight and eight wouldn't be acceptable. It would be a step forward, but it wouldn't be acceptable when the the goal is the playoffs. Um, so they need some wins to show for it. But I do think the arrow is pointing in the right direction on this franchise. I think we've seen some upgrades in talent. I think we've seen some upgrades in coaching. I think we've seen some upgrades in buy-in. I think there's a lot of, um, you know, I think there's a lot of buy-in out there. And, and so I, I think there's there's things that are pointing up for this franchise. Ryan asks, what do I think it would take to get Kenyon Drake? You know, I wrote the other day. I'd say a six. I mean, look. Um, I saw there was a report, I think, that said maybe a fifth rounder. If I'm the Lions, you know, you uh, again, this fifth round pick, I don't know that you you spin Quandre Diggs for Kenyon Drake. Maybe maybe you do. I mean, uh, safety would be more valuable than running back in, in today's NFL. But we'll get to Cody's question next about Diggs' play. Um, but, you know, I, I think if you could get Kenyon Drake for a sixth round pick 
uh, and I forget what the Lions have exactly when it comes to draft compensation right now, I would do that. Um, I think he's, uh, you know, especially if you win this week and you have some things, um, you know, you, you still have some, you're still in the mix here, right? Look, it's going to take a lot to catch the Packers and the Vikings, but I'm for taking swings. I'm for going for it. And uh, I would I would have no doubt, uh, no hesitation to deal for that. Uh, all right, so Diggs' is play. I know a couple questions here are, are piling up yet. Adam says they're not out of the playoff picture yet. A lot of games left to be played. Absolutely, Adam. Uh, you're right. Um, you know, like I said, Lions only have three games against teams with winning records left on their schedule. Adam will get to see Quandre in, in Seattle, by the way. Uh, can't read the name here, but how much do I think trading for Von Miller will cost us if we have Devon Kennard, Devon Kennard in that pass rush role? Uh, or the, in that role, they need a pass rusher. All right, let's let's hit these two things. First on Diggs' play, um, it has dropped off this year. Uh, you know, he was a Pro Bowl alternate last year. I thought he was playing at his best probably the end of the 2017 season. The Lions gave him that extension before last year. I thought he had a nice year last year. He really did. Uh, you know, three interceptions. He was making some plays. Um, I don't know that it's not just about the missed tackles. I think the Lions saw signs that maybe his play had dropped off, you know, even before games showed up. But, you know, you always sort of, especially when you got a Pro Bowl player, you're hoping that that's not the case. You know, he had the hamstring injury here lately, came back, he played, I think it was about 75% of the snaps the other night. Uh, so that's something that, um, you know, they, you know, maybe were cutting down his minutes or maybe had a, an excuse to and, and see some of those young guys more, see Will Harris specifically more. Um, so I think his play had dropped off. Like I said, there were none of the big plays. If you look at the PFF grades, and I don't put a ton of stock into those, um, that, yeah, I think you, uh, you know, you, you can see that his, but, you know, I guess what I'm saying, sorry, I just had a text message pop up there. Lost my train of thought. Um, I think those numbers show that they, they you know, match the eye test that the play wasn't quite there. Like I said, maybe there was something else there. Maybe it wasn't just about the play. Who knows? Maybe Quandre wanted out of Detroit, right? Maybe he asked uh, asked to get out of Detroit. Uh, but, uh, you know, I I do think the play was not quite at the level that it was the last couple of years. As for Von Miller, I just don't see Denver dealing him. I know Denver dealt Emmanuel Sanders today, but look, Von Miller has meant a lot to that franchise. He's been in the league for, you know, a decade almost. He's a he's a really good pass rusher. If I'm Denver, I'm asking for the moon for, for Von Miller. So um, I just, uh, you know, he's, what, 30, 31, so, you know, you're going to have to give up a first-round pick for him probably. I just I, – I don't know that that's a move that I would make. I think that the compensation may be too steep for a guy that means that much to the organization. Certainly, um, like I said, I, I, I'm always in, up for adding good players. Um, but I just don't know that the, the price tag will be there for the Lions. Maybe they prove me wrong. Uh, but, you know, I just I – I have my doubts that, 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 that A, Denver will deal him at the end of the day and that B, the Lions would be willing to, to meet that price. Uh, and yeah, no, I had him coming to Detroit this weekend. Giants game, they're in town, big game Sunday. Golden Tate comes back to Detroit. Half the Lions defense, it seems, used to play for for the uh, the Giants. So you know, Snacks, Canard, those guys, they they get their uh, they get their comeuppance, I guess, or, or they get to give it to the the Giants. They get to to battle that team that that they know so well. Um, should be a good game. We'll see, man. The Lions have their hands full with Saquon Barkley, obviously, uh, arguably the best running back in the NFL, and this run defense has been pretty atrocious so far this year. So, all right, uh, running out of questions here, and I don't want to go too long. I just kind of wanted to, to talk to everybody real quick, answer any questions that you may have. And you know, like I said, really busy day. Uh, you know, bad news, but not totally unexpected on the carry on Johnson front. Um, unfortunate that he underwent surgery today. There's a chance he could be back late in the season. If not, he'll have two straight years ended by knee injuries. It's not a good thing for a running back, uh, especially one that came into the league with some injury history. And then the uh, the Quandre Diggs trade, um, the, that was a little more surprising. Um, again, I think his play was not at the level that it was the two previous seasons, uh, but I think that you know this was a move that the Lions thought that they were the ones who started it. They went out exploring the trade market for him. Didn't get you know many bites. Uh, took what they felt was the best offer. Fifth round pick. Like the young safeties that they have. Uh, they think they'll be okay. And to answer Leo's question here at the end. The Lions are buyers. They are not selling right now. They're not in sell mode. They're not you know chopping this thing down. They believe that they can uh, go out and get somebody that's going to help this team this year. 
Uh, and you know we've seen Bob Quinn. He's made moves at the trade deadline, a bunch of them so far in, in his tenure as Lions GM. So it wouldn't shock me one bit if here in the next you know seven days the Lions add uh, somebody else that they think is going to help them win ball games this year. They got a fifth round pick for Quandre that in theory can help them in the future. I think the Lions could still be buyers, could still add somebody this year. So and yeah, uh look, Leo said, you know, defense is, is bad, why make it worse? Let's end it on this one with the Quandre thing. I just I don't think that the Lions think of it that way. I think they they look at it as um they could do without Quandre. That they could uh you know they'll be fine in the secondary with those young guys, Tracy Walker, Will Harris, throw Tavon Wilson in the mix. Um, you know, I they don't look at this as a as a downgrade, they think those guys behind him are fine. They think Quandre's play has, has dropped off. Uh, they think they'll be okay. So will it work out? Again, there's the other element, the locker room element that you have to worry about. Um, you know, you uh, 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 you never know how, how that's going to play out. I think the Golden Tate trade had an, an adverse effect on the locker room last year. Sort of a similar situation. They went out and actually bought first and then sold at the end. They got Harrison, then they sold Tate right before the deadline. I think that sort of deflated some people. People looked around the locker room and said, oh, man, what's going on? We get rid of one of our best players. I think it's, you know, that that same thing certainly could be said here. That's why I think, um, and David asked, how do I know they're buyers? I, you know, just from my reporting, talking to people today, um, I was told explicitly they are still buyers 100%, 1,000%. So, uh, you know, again, we'll see what, what shakes out with that. Maybe they make a move this week. Maybe they wait till next week. Maybe something they lose in the Giants game and they, you know, the, the script gets flipped. But uh, but I was told today they, they are buyers. Um, so, you know, we'll see. I think the locker room is something to, to monitor. It always is. Uh, you know, but again, these guys are professionals. They've seen things come and go. They're all playing for their next deal as well. So uh, just something to uh, to monitor going forward. Um, all right, that'll do it for me. I got to go upstairs and, and tend to the kids. Uh, you might see my son walking in the background early on in this video. Uh, read to him, get him bathed and everything before bed here. So um, thanks everyone for joining me here on Facebook Live and Freep.com. And uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty more news coming from the locker room this week. That'll do it for me, Dave Burkett, Freep.com.